Hello, everyone. Welcome back to Real and Raw with Reverend Cameron Jewell. And in this video, I'm going to do my best to express the core essence of the messages I have been sending out lately about the transgender movement. All right. And I do believe that the core essence has been lost in the frustration of everything that is going on um, because it is very it's all new and um, a lot of it doesn't make sense. And it also feels that a lot of it is being pushed onto us. Um, however, I want to make some things very, very clear because whether I wasn't relaying my message properly or it's just being manipulated because it doesn't align with the mainstream narrative, I want to make something very, very clear. A few things. One, I am not saying that there's anything wrong with trans men and trans women. It's not what I'm saying. What I'm saying is that I'm talking about the children. The children are my focal point. Let grown adults do what they want to do. They want to sterilize themselves, sterilize themselves. They want to chop parts of their bodies off and sew other parts on. Let them do that. That's their choice. And I'm all for it. However, what I'm not for is this ideology being pushed onto children. Why aren't we just allowing children to be children? If a little boy wants to wear a pink dress and put on makeup and, and walk and talk in a certain way, let him do that. Why do we have to put him on puberty blockers that stunts the growth of his organ that he was born with? Why, if a young woman wants to be dressed and, you know, and talk like a boy, let her do that. Why are we cutting off her breasts at 15 years old? This is what I'm talking about. And it's, it's, it's mind blowing that I'm even having to say that. You know, we don't let people drive until they're 16. We don't let them um, buy cigarettes or alcohol until they're 21. For the longest time in history, and this might still be true today, women have been denied the right to get a hysterectomy until they're 25. And even when they turn 25, they still have to get permission when they're suffering every month from painful periods so bad that they want to kill themselves. But we didn't fight for that. You know, and that's what's blowing my mind is that we are telling these children that they need to chemically and physically alter the body that they were born in in order to accept themselves instead of just allowing them to express themselves in whatever way that they choose. We are creating lifelong pharmaceutical customers. The, the pharmaceutical companies are going to bank off of this. And usually when you take pharmaceutical drugs it's because you are sick not because you are well so we are we are advocating for sickness yeah take these drugs for the rest of your life and that'll make you better this is blowing my mind and I've also been talking about you know how a lot of this may stem from the food that Americans have been eating for decades now the standard American diet is loaded with artificial colorings, flavors, preservatives, processed sugar. It is well known that the, the detrimental effects on our health that come from processed sugar and high fructose corn syrup, you know, and I'm going to start going into the stores and showing you these everyday items that most of, that the standard American has in their cabinet or their refrigerator and show them the poison that is in it. And when we are consuming things with our bodies that our body cannot recognize, it leads to chemical imbalances, which then result in physical and mental illness. This is true. And a big part of me is like, man, if we could get people to fight as hard for clean food and water as they do for pharmaceutical drugs and body mutilation, we might really see some big changes. And I'm like, how can people not see this? You know, I, and not only that, not only that, like why are they pushing so hard for the external world to validate them? You know, why? Because that's almost what it feels like. Like, like let's get all of the children on board with this the children should just be be kids why are we putting this on them that's a great question why some of these kids a lot of these kids don't even start haven't even ever questioned it until it showed up in their classroom they should be learning about math 
and history and science, but now we're changing science, you know, and that's another thing that's super frustrating. Now we're just changing things to fit this narrative that creates thousands and thousands of pharmaceutical customers. There are, there are people making big bucks off of, off of what is happening right now. I don't even know what to call it because it does seem like an illness, but if you call it an illness, then you're like transphobic. But what if, if it's not an illness, why do you need drugs? That's a great question, I think, you know? Why else would you take drugs if you're not sick? So instead of realizing, hey, you know, this might be an illness, how can we remedy it? But of course, the Western world is like, oh, drugs, 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 drugs. There are several other avenues that we could explore, such as freedom of expression, letting them dress up and be whoever they want to be without chemically and physically altering the only vessel that they have to live in this life. This is it you know and there have not been enough long-term studies and they say with these puberty blockers that you put an 11 year old boy on a puberty blocker his genitals they do that to stop the development of the genital genitals because it's not the right ones but then if this young man grows up to 25 years old and decides he wants to explore his manhood he's basically deformed down there and 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 once he stops then it'll go back to when he's 11 years old and start there this is all the literature that you're putting out supporting this and how fair is that so now that person has to live the rest of their life with what could very well be a deformed genital because because of a phase that they were going through as a kid whether it's a phase or not let these kids grow up let them explore let them express themselves before making these life altering decisions that's what i'm trying to get at but yet in you know online and even here where i live uh, my words have been twisted and manipulated you know i worked with a with a trans woman for not too long but this trans woman would leave the job without doing any of her side work, without doing any of her side work. And it would put us in the weeds. I would come in after her and have the night shift and it would put us in the weeds. And, and so one day I said, hey, could you fill the ice bin and stock the to-go's before you leave, please? And then she went to the manager and said that I was attacking her because I'm transphobic. I was kind and I tried to be kind to her and she was very rude to me, but now I'm transphobic. It's like, it's getting really weird and really tricky out here, which is why I also give myself grace as I'm learning to talk about this stuff because it's all very new and, and none of us are perfect, you know? Um, when I'm getting attacked by people and I get defensive, I called one girl delusional. She acted like the whole world was over because I called her delusional um, because there's, there's male and there's female when it comes to biological sexes. You can make as many genders up as you want. But there's male and there's female. What about dogs? What about cats? What about horses? What about all these other mammals? And even like birds or lizards. You know what I mean? Lizards might be able to change, but we're not lizards. We're humans. And from the, from the beginning of our time, there has been male and there has been female. And then there have been cases where somebody is born with both. Okay, but even when they're born with both, it still falls in the male female binary. It's not a third biological sex. But now we're changing things. We're changing basic biology. We're changing things to fit this narrative. And that, and if you don't agree with it, then you're a bigot. And that's, I think that's a problem. You know, I, 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 I know that time is going to tell the truth. And I know that when that truth is revealed, I'm going to be proud of myself for the side that I stood on, that I stood up and I spoke out in defense of our children to not pump these hardcore pharmaceutical drugs through their precious little systems, to not cut off their body parts before they even had the chance to develop and see who they, who they are, who they might want to be. I'll know that I did not stay quiet and I did not back down. 
What about you?